tonight on Live from the Theater Basement. Orchestral music is essential to the cultural life of our northern Arizona community. Since 1950, the Flagstaff Symphony Orchestra's music has enriched our mountain home. Tonight, we chat with Charles Latchock, conductor and musical director, and Larry Lang, executive director of the Flagstaff Symphony Orchestra, here on Live from the Theater Basement. The Arboretum at Flagstaff, a beautiful destination for local and out-of-town visitors, increases the understanding, appreciation, and conservation of plants and plant communities native to the Colorado Plateau. The Arboretum is a wonderful venue for a wide variety of events and educational programs. I'm your host, Chris Farrell. Tonight's correspondent is Jamie Hasapis, and today we have the distinct pleasure of talking with the conductor and musical director, Charles Latshaw, and the executive director, Larry Lang, of the Flagstaff Symphony Orchestra, here on Live from the Theater Basement. Thanks, Chris. And welcome, Larry and Charles. It's great to have you here today. Thanks, Jamie. And thank great to be you, with you. Thank you both for having us. Ah, you're welcome. Uh, Larry, let's start with you. Um, you've recently, um, recently have become the executive director here at FS um, in Flagstaff at the FSO, and uh, yeah, there are a lot of challenges. Um, so, how has that, uh, I guess, uh, affected your new role here in in Flagstaff? Uh, how have you been able to uh, to deal with it and to uh, adjust? Well, it's been a it's been a wonderful ride, actually. I mean, I've been here about a year and a half now, and a year of that has been in COVID, so most of my time. But uh, you know what? We have a great team, and Charles and I, and the artistic staff, and the musicians, and the board have worked really hard this last year to develop a lot of uh, virtual uh, things. We have about 20 videos now on our website. People can go and watch for free. And we're also producing some live, uh, excuse me, some online concerts uh, that are available this uh, spring. We've already had two and we have two more. Uh, so we're really uh, looking forward to people coming online and, and watching what we've been able to do. A great. I know I've watched a lot of the FSO Strong uh, videos and seen a lot right. of my friends performing them. And they're, they're just fabulous. It's just a nice... Uh, escape and it's wonderful to hear our local musicians doing uh, so well. Um, and Charles, uh, you know, uh, I've had the opportunity of singing under your baton and uh, and performing with you, and it, it's been a pleasure. You bring a lot of excitement and energy to to the orchestra, and uh, you know what Chris was saying earlier about the. Uh, uh, the quality of the orchestra was here. I moved here in 2005 and, and heard the symphony for the first time. And I grew up in Northern California, went to school in Southern. So I, I listened to both the uh, San Francisco Phil and the LA Phil for so many years. And then coming here, I was just blown away. And it's even gotten better. Every year it seems to get better. And it's gotten better again under your baton. Uh, so how are you doing this? What are some of the things that you're doing to excite the, the musicians gosh you're asking for all of my secrets all at once um you know and i think of course larry comes from a background too as a conductor and i think um i think larry yeah. would agree with me one of the secrets to getting good results is to never stop asking for improvement. Uh, that uh, I started with Flagstaff Symphony in 2017 and I'm in my fourth season and every concert we have, even now when we're doing small concerts with nine or 30 players instead of our usual 65 to 80 or Jamie, you've sung on stage when we've had 200 people on stage in Ardry Auditorium. Uh, there are always things that we can find uh, I can find in my own conducting that I need to improve, that I can work on. And there are always things uh, that we can bring out to, sh to help the musicians shine uh, and be at their best on stage. The neat thing about being a conductor is uh, I can work on myself and I can, I can always get better. And that to me is what appeals uh, to being a musician or a performer of any type that I don't think I'm gonna be any good until maybe I'm 65 and then I should keep going after that. Uh, so 
that um, when we get on stage together, I work on myself to try to be the very best person I can be and the best musician I can be in order to give the musicians the opportunity to shine and show off what they can do. Yes. Well, I've noticed that. You, you're always asking to give, 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 and everybody seems to do that. Um, and it's just a delight <laughs> as an audience member and as a performer, uh, I have to say that. Good. Um, and, and, and Larry, you know, um, during this COVID time, it's been pretty tough raising money into keeping the, or the orchestras on going and, 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 um, and, and sustainable. Um, what are some of the things that we're doing here locally that maybe people otherwise otherwhere could uh, could learn from yeah absolutely once once the uh, pandemic started we started a, a campaign called keep the music alive and the response has been fantastic from our community and uh, and then I, as I mentioned we developed those FSO strong videos which feature our musicians performing from their homes and in some cases small groups performing from the Lowell Observatory and the Museum of Northern Arizona Charles even gave a little master class on uh, Beethoven's Fifth. All of that's there. And those uh, videos have drawn donations from across the community and really across America, because of course we're online now. Uh, we developed a, an online Nutcracker, which you may have seen, which uh, was seen in six different countries. We were surprised at the oh. international scope of our audience. So those are some of the things we're doing. And as I mentioned, we have uh, this month, it started just a week ago called a group, um, excuse me, a concert called Serenade for Strings. It's our largest production yet, featuring 30 of our best uh, string players. So that's been a lot of fun. And then next uh, month, we're going to do something called a concert of healing and hope uh, to honor all of those who died during this terrible pandemic and to give a little hope for our future for better days ahead. So those are all available on our website. Lots of information about how to buy tickets, how to donate to that Keep the Music Alive campaign, and to watch those other videos that we've talked about. Yeah, that's amazing with the, with the I, I guess you could say, the reach of what the internet has done for us. It's, it's, uh, do you see going um, virtual and continuing on with uh, doing some recordings in the future? Um, so that the whole world can can hear your performances and see them. Yes, uh, Charles, I mean I think we'd or, like to. And Charles should probably answer this, but uh, there's a production cost and a copyright issue, and I'll let him speak to that. Right. Well, yeah, sure. I'm so um, yeah, I mean, we're fortunate it. with yeah with orchestral music we've got 400 years of literature to choose from and so there are always some public domain options but uh, a lot of the things we're doing because it's a, a very important thing to me to have music by a living composer or an underrepresented composer on almost every single program uh, the copyright and distribution uh, rules on those things become much more complicated and we want artists to be compensated for their work uh, but i think um what we've what we've discovered is there is an audience that wants to experience our things online who may be much slower to return to the theater when time comes to open the theater doors again uh, and so it may be valuable for us to continue to create online materials one of the great things that has been a byproduct from the the last year of having to completely rethink the way we perform from an online stage perform or excuse me from a live stage performance to an online pre-recorded performance is now we're developing a catalog of uh, recordings that we have that we can use in the future uh, for various FSO projects. And I'm very excited about having those materials uh, because for the last 71 seasons that the FSO has been around, we have some recordings, some audio recordings, but we have almost no video of the orchestra performing. Uh, and so here we do, um, we've been creating some really great products this year. Yes, you have. It's been really a delight to watch them um, from my perspective. Um, so speaking of that, you know, you just recently uh, had rehearsed and um, performed with the strings. Uh, and so what was that rehearsal like? Was there new excitement? What, you know, how are the musicians feeling? And how are you feeling with that experience for not doing it for over a year? 
It's, uh, it, yeah, we were rusty. Uh, the last full orchestra concert the FSO performed was on March 14th of 2020. And that was a huge concert with, that featured Rachel Barton Pine playing the Saint-Saëns Third Violin Concerto. And we played uh, Anton Bruckner's Fourth Symphony, which, which is this massive 65-minute uh, uh, huge romantic work with a huge orchestra. And, and we had a terrific audience who showed up there March 14th uh, before, you know, coronavirus shut everything down. And so this past uh, month, about two weeks ago, when we got together to rehearse and to record this performance called Serenade for Strings, which is still available on our website, flagstaffsymphony.org, uh, this was the first time we had put together a string orchestra. And many of the musicians came in at that first rehearsal and said, you know, this is my first time actually performing with other people in a year. It had been almost exactly a year. Many of us had to go and find where our tuxedos were buried in our closets and, you know, and find our, our way back to a performing mindset. Of course, we were socially distanced six feet apart, which adds an extra challenge. Uh, string musicians especially are used to sitting very close and sharing a music stand and turning the pages for one another. Uh, and we were in an unfamiliar space. Uh, we were very fortunate to work with Trinity Heights United Methodist church who let us rehearse and record there two weeks ago uh, and it looks fantastic on the video uh, but you know it, things took a little while to get back into shape but the experience of playing together uh, felt an awful lot like riding a bicycle um, I think we were all apprehensive walking into the room and then five minutes into rehearsal it started to feel normal again and we forget about the fact that we're wearing masks and we're sitting so far apart and it's it's so hard to see and hear each other and we just want to make music together uh, and that's it's 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 been interesting to realize what a great privilege it had been all of our lives to be able to perform live together. Uh, and it's a privilege that I don't think we're going to take for granted again. Yeah, well, oh my gosh, our time is up. Um, thank you so much, both of you. This has been very enlightening. Um, and I'm sure our audiences will appreciate what, um, what they're hearing this evening. So thank you, Larry and uh, Charles for joining us tonight on Live from the Theater Basement. Orchestral music is essential to the cultural life of our Northern Arizona community. Since 1950, the Flagstaff Symphony Orchestra's vision has remained the same, to share beauty and inspire joy, to create meaningful experiences for families, friends, and neighbors, and cultivate generations of artists, educators, and leaders through its music education programs. Flagstaff Symphony Orchestra. Tonight's correspondent, Jamie Hasapis, with Charles Latchaw, conductor and musical director, and Larry Lang, executive director of Flagstaff Symphony Orchestra. Charles, wonderful to have you on the show. Larry, great to see you as always. Uh, Larry and I cross paths in Flagstaff a lot, and it's always great to work with Larry, and great to have, uh, have Charles on the show. Live from the theater basement, producers Jamie Hasapis, that guy gets around. Jamie Hasapis and Linda Soteria. Engineer Matt Brewer. Technician Jaden Roberts. Associate producers Virginia Brown, Joe Maniglia, John Propster, and Michael Rulon. Crew Noah Bessler, Sam Bradbury, Casey Garcia, Ava Haynes, Madison Hartson, Malene LeBurge, Justin Mosca, Marco Tencumo, and Sel Wasson. Dramaturgy, Theatricos Artistic Committee. Play Curation, Northern Arizona Playwriting Showcase, Executive Producer, Chris Burr. Live from the theater basement, streaming live on Sunday evenings at 7.30 p.m. and available wherever you get your podcasts, is a production of Theatricos Theater Company in partnership with Northern Arizona Playwriting Showcase and Deuteran Films. Theatricos Theater Company, Flagstaff, Arizona, is the theater company of Northern Arizona and the Grand Canyon. Embracing the spirit of Broadway with such wonderful shows as the family musical Little Shop of Horrors. We did that recently, and the holiday classic Miracle on 34th Street, both examples of the kinds of shows we do. Coming up at the end of the month, we have a community reading of Arthur Miller's The Crucible. A perfect opportunity for you to dig into theater that is timely given today's political climate. Also, an opportunity for you to sit back and relax as an audience member or, get this, 
you could be one of the readers. It's an easy, easy way for you to get involved in hometown theater. Admission is free. Live from the theater basement, the weekly podcast streaming show, Theatrico's Theater Company alternates between 10-minute short plays and interviews with Arizona arts leaders like the good folks at the Flagstaff Symphony Orchestra. If you as a listener viewer have input, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at theater at theatricos.com. Live from the theater basement, streaming live on Sunday evenings at 7.30 p.m. and available wherever you get your podcasts is funded in part by the Flagstaff Arts Council, hashtag Creative Flagstaff, and the Arizona Community foundation. Additional funding from Arizona Commission on the Arts, Flagstaff 365, BBB Revenue from the City of Flagstaff, Calf Country Radio, and patrons of the arts like you. Thanks for joining us on Live from the Theater Basement. This is Theatricos.